Uh, sorry about the technical problems. We're back inside now. Uh, the sun is shining. It was obviously too hot out there or something. So yeah, today we're going to talk to you about the stoats uh, in the garden and uh, their process of giving birth, uh, which is really exciting sort of start to the year. So we're going to sh start by showing you... Uh, are we ready to go, Will? We'll just give it a minute to let everyone yeah. rejoin the event. Yeah, so sorry about the hiccup head earlier. So we're just waiting for everyone to rejoin. Uh, but beautiful sunny day out there today. Uh, and as I was uh, saying before, it's really cold uh, at night, uh, really sharp frost. We've had, we've had a frost virtually every night so far this month, which is sort of holding everything back here. Uh, all the plant life and stuff is getting a uh, really hard time every night uh, Every night with these really hard frosts. We've had it down to minus five, minus six here. Um, coldest place in Yorkshire it was the other day in Thixendale. So, uh, yeah, so we're just waiting to make a start. But if anyone have got any questions about stoats and the process of uh, them breeding, which I've been studying here for many, many years now. Um, so, uh, yeah, send the questions in and I'll answer them as best I can. I'm just waiting for a go-ahead from Sam downstairs, who's just checking all on the tech. And uh, the door chime as well. Yeah. So thank you again for rejoining everyone. We're just giving everyone a moment to rejoin the event as we had a hiccup to start with. And then we'll be talking today about stoats. <laughs> Did all that without moving my mouth. <laughs> the other thing to remind viewers of is we're taking names for this stoat. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. at the moment she's nicknamed Olga, but we're open to suggestions of new names for her. Uh, super little stoat she is, and she's been with us uh, since last year now. So I think we've got to go ahead from Sam to give it another go. Right then. Yeah, so welcome uh, everyone to today's live. Uh, we're going to talk about the stoats and their uh, breeding process uh, right here in the garden. So uh, we're going to start with a clip of what we saw at the end of last month, which was this uh, little female stoat. And uh, if you look carefully, she's got a very fat tummy there. You can see she's clearly pregnant she looks a little bit like she swallowed a light bulb uh, when she hops back up on there uh, she's just having a drink from the paddling pool but there you go you can see there that she's uh, clearly sort of pregnant there which is a great sign so they always give birth towards the end of uh, March beginning of April and uh, yes, that's what we were seeing. So we keep a close eye on that little stoat, see where she's moving, see where she's traveling. Uh, and then we notice she'd slim down. And uh, this is some of the shots here, which is right in the garden, uh, just near the maze wall. This is, the maze wall is just up above the brow. You can see she's slimmed down a little bit, but they always have a little bit of baggy skin where they've had their swollen tummy uh, while they've been pregnant. Uh, and then, this is where I'd found her. So I wait for her to come to the feeding areas and then I follow her, I watch her and follow her direction of travel. And it didn't take me many minutes to find where she was because she's only about 20 meters away uh, in this nest here, which we don't have an internal camera here. We, ha we have an external camera. And quite often we have stoke kits in this area here. So she was actually in, in there herself as a kit, uh, as one of Bandita's daughters. Uh, but this is her scampering around there. So out she pops there. So I saw she was in there and I saw she was collecting nesting material. So I put her some more out. I put a great pile of dead grass down there for her. She left it a day because of my scent was maybe on it. And then she... Uh, found all this grass and starts pulling it in and this is a great thing to see she's obviously going to make a really nice nest in there for her kits and this is really rare footage to be getting a stoat actually taking nesting material in and i think i might be the only person that's filmed this and i've filmed it lots of times now with different stoats um you know a wild stoat collecting nesting material it's absolutely great stuff this There, she was actually dragging it in almost like a badger does there, uh, using her mouth and uh, and the front paws, tucking it under herself. Yeah, so just up from there in this shot, you can see there's actually 
uh, a bin and coming down from the bin so there's an actual nest in there so maybe she'll transfer her kits across to there but this is a different stoat that we've got here this is a male stoat much bigger much stockier and he's traveling down uh, sniffing this young female out and they have a very unusual breeding cycle that they do delayed implantation so she can be mated a week after she gives birth and then doesn't give birth until the following year and this is the moment she was being mated and chased around I was actually out in the garden I heard a lot of noise two stoats I control the dogs and here we are we've got uh, keep hold of Pip because uh, she's a little terror at the end of the day you can just see me at the top of that picture uh, that's how close they were to me there and uh, you can see when she pops her head up there the back of her neck a wet mark and that's because she's been mated she's been grasped at the back of the neck by the male uh, but he's back again and again because um, he actually then wants to make the kits as well um, and she just is sort of seeing him off there in a semi semi playful way that's playful for Stokes <laughs> uh, but there she is back and forth again yeah so uh, yes the male will go in there he will uh, make the female sometimes away from the nest sometimes in the nest where the kits are but he can actually make the kits from two weeks old and they can then do delayed implantation until the following following year so quite a fascinating breeding cycle so that's it's this time of year that we're seeing these little kits uh, and potentially in the next couple of weeks we'll be seeing them above ground so to go back of the history yeah so we're looking back this is she she's probably one of these little stoats here this is bandita and uh, her family and in that year so this is probably her here as a young kit so this is last year so they can breed within the first year and this is where she was same place <laughs> as a kit herself playing with the siblings there so this is what we're sort of looking forward to uh, over the summer this is late summer now we've got the kits that's a male and female uh, hanging out together and this is just outside the living room as well they're living in the uh, area of rocks inside the ivy there so that's our living room in the background so we're literally watching these stoke kits literally from the living room which is uh, really great stuff so this is uh, a little favorite area of uh, theirs where they come and play and fight on the children's trampoline the tramp the tra that little trampoline my kids have grown out of but we've kept it there for the stoats and they absolutely love it and this is how this little stoat became quite famous um, doing her little moves on here and this is the best bit she actually bounces herself completely off there whoa there she goes so uh, yeah absolutely great little characters these stoats and we're really look, looking forward to trying to follow this stoat we're hoping she's going to take her kits into one of our nests where we've uh, actually got a camera rig and we'll hopefully be able to bring you some more footage she's underground at the moment in a safe place uh, so we just see her when she comes, comes above ground at the moment so this is crackle 2019 this is one of bandita's kits from 2018 carrying kits so this is what we're looking forward to seeing uh, moving kits around they <laughs> they have a fun old time when they're moving them they, they coil up into a little coil and get grasped on the back of the head but this is real speed you can see how fast these little uh, stoats travel with the kits she had five kits there that she's taking back and forth yeah so she was born 2018 this female stoat 2019 she has a litter of kits and they're actually born a few meters away from me here underneath my decking near my studio so they were great little kits so she had them here she moved them down into the bin nest and then she moved them uh, back around into a shed here uh, and bandita had kits here that year too which was quite unusual there's a lot of vine and tension between them uh, but the, all the kits uh, from the litters um, more or less survived i think bandita raised seven out of nine and crackle raised five out of her kits so uh, yeah and we do have another female stoat that we're trying to track down at the moment uh, that's heading around that side of the garden and come in for food she's gone quite quiet at the moment so uh, we're just watching and waiting to see if we've got a double again but uh, we'll, we'll wait and see 
And the other thing we were going to say is about them this time when they're moving them. We often get them handed in. Don't yeah, we? yeah, yeah. So I take in young stoats and weasels and do my best to hand rear them and get them back out into the wild. And this is uh, Whisper from last year. Whisper and uh, Whisper's friend Stuart have become internet sensations. They've had how many million views? 70, 80 million views oh, yeah. across their videos on our platform and the Dodo's platform um, across all the different platforms. So, yeah, we're into like 80 million views, I think, now of their story. Um, but that when they're handed in, this is a, a kid four weeks old just before the eyes open. Uh, and there's just maybe a little glint of an eye opening, maybe not quite. Yeah, so at five weeks old, these stoke kits, eyes open. Uh, and if we get any of these handed in, we'll follow their stories um, and through to release here. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to take questions now. I'll take a few questions. Yeah, yeah, I'll take some questions. So, uh, thank you again, everyone, for rejoining the event. And apologies for the technical <laughs> difficulties, but we will take as many questions as we can today. Um, they is So, first, it's just a question about which state we're following. So, um, some people are asking whether this is the one called Olga. Yeah, we, we think it is Olga. Um, to get those definitive uh, photographs, I'm taking more and more video nowadays. And to get that perfect, uh, you usually take portrait photographs of them, just a headshot to recognize them. But it looks like Olga to us. And uh, Olga's maybe up for a rename maybe this year. <laughs> so, so we are taking suggestions for names. So please mm -hmm. send them in. Um, and we'll be hoping to start a poll tomorrow that will happen over the weekend to choose her new name. Mm -hmm. um, so Sue Ringle is asking, uh, is Bandita still around? Mm. No, <laughs> it's quite. It's a quite simple no. Um, we haven't seen her for a, um, a good part of the winter now, uh, which is, you know, it's very sad for us all here. She reigned here for five years nearly. Um, so quite, um, yeah, quite a special state too. She was born 2018, I think. Is it? 16, 16, yeah. 16. So she she was yeah. quite an old I, I want to think now, it's 2016 she was born here uh, and we followed her story. For the first year she was away while her mother still reigned here. I think she was at the bottom of the valley here because um, there was a litter of kits there and uh, then she moved back into the garden when uh, White Muzzle, her mother, who also she reigned for four years here uh, before she... Um, uh, went to Stoty Heaven. So, uh, yeah, so unfortunately Bandita's uh, almost certainly no longer with us, uh, but we have her daughter. Uh, the special thing about Bandita that we had here, she actually turned white at winter, and she was quite a tricky step to follow. She was very, very wild, even though she was born uh, within 100 metres of here, and she was always elusive, always difficult, and that was the part, part of the charm about trying to film her trying to outwit her was very difficult and some of her, uh, her young have actually been a lot easier to film and um, like me putting fresh bed in near that young stoat's nest, Bandita could have moved the kits just like that if I'd done anything like that. She was still super wild, super wary and that's why she reigned here for five years. Uh, Miss M is asking another question about Bandita. How old do we think she was? Yeah, yeah, so she was born 2016 uh, here. So that would make her uh, five or six. Yeah, 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 yeah. She would have been coming up coming up to five. Um, 16, yeah, five years, yeah, just short of five years. What size is a, to a Stokes territory? And that comes from Facebook watcher Tina Waring. Uh, so that, that varies. It's dependent, like all predators, it all depends on what food's available in that territory. Uh, so stoats here will travel, um, a, well, Bandita would have a kit sometimes 400 metres away from here, 500 metres, sometimes 600 metres. Her kits would be actually in the nest, so she would range out from that area. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at a decent sort of area of land, um, like 40 acres, 50 acres, um, and the males have much wider uh, range. There's a lot of studies been done on them. Some of them tend to stay in a tighter home range and some of them will range big distances trying to cover as many females' territories as possible. Um, so some have this go forth and conquer sort of aspect to them, which is a real problem in places like New Zealand where stoats have been swimming from island to island, uh, kilometres and kilometres they've swam uh, in New Zealand 
to different islands and they'll even you know they don't think anything of it which is quite incredible you know a small little animal like this swimming three four five kilometers out at sea uh, is quite extraordinary but that's what they actually do question from a viewer on instagram do stoats live in america yes yes so in america they're called um, a short-tailed weasel uh, and then there's a long-tailed weasel um, and a least weasel so in england we have a stoat which is a short-tailed weasel basically in other parts of the world and uh, we have a common weasel which is very closely related to a least weasel and least weasels are teeny weeny weeny female only twice the size of a mouse um, and the males about twice the size of that uh, Janice Finn on Facebook is asking what is the largest litter you've had of stoats? Uh, the largest litter we had uh, was a litter of banditas and she had nine kits um, there's sort of suggestions and reports that they can have up to 13 kits. I've never seen anything like that. We usually have seen eight, uh, seven, eight, uh, nine, uh, a litter of five, but they were born here off camera. So we weren't quite sure exactly how many there were there. And usually there's one that's slightly uh, a runt in the litter uh, when you get up to numbers like nine and eight. Um, and we usually lose about one of those. Uh, Melanie Jacobs is asking, is a stoat the same as an ermine? And is that what kings used to trim their robes with the white colour? It is, yeah. Yeah, so in, in certain parts of the world, um, that uh, in there is that Latin name ends with ermine, and that's the, uh, um, the stoat, yeah, and that's exactly uh, the royal garments. We are all trimmed with the uh, um, stoats, stoat pelt, and then the black bits are the actual tails in the, uh, in the garments, yeah. Uh, so probably just got time for one more question. Just find one that we can answer. An easy one. A nice easy <laughs> one for you. Um, we've got so many. Um, are there differences between male and female stoats? And that comes from Kat Schroeder. Yeah, there's a lot, lot of difference in size. Um, and obviously the, the obvious bit. Uh, but it's a size difference, yeah. So female uh, stoat is about 240 grams and a male stoat will be at least sort of 230, 40, 200, uh, you know, 380. So they're, they're approximately like a third, at least a third bigger. With weasels, you can have almost a double, doubling in weight. I mean, the, 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 they live in a massive wide range across the world. So in different places, the, the stoats differ in size, depending on the prey species they eat as well. So that there is a wide band of uh, weight uh, in like Northern Africa, um, weasels, which are the small ones, are almost as big as stoats. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so there is a wide um, size range, but here the females typically 240 grams and the males typically about 340, 360, some 380 that have weighed. Um, so uh, yeah, there's quite a size difference. So thank you all for your questions. That's all we've got time for today. Yeah, thank you for joining us and sorry about the technical problem earlier.